Thanks for coming back to the show. Design Today is bringing you another one of my friends. Uh, his name is Brian Haney. He and I go back, I don't know, maybe about five, six years. And uh, since I met him, he has been a mentor of mine, a fantastic friend. Uh, he is a business entrepreneur extraordinaire, has done so many different things. One man wrecking ball. This guy can do it all. Um, I wanted to have him come on the show today so that we could talk a bit about mentorship. He's been a mentor of mine now for some years. And I felt like he's got some good insights that he could share to help those who are both mentors uh, or mentees and uh, provide some valuable insight to how to nurture and make that relationship work. Uh, so stay tuned. We'll get started with Design Today featuring Brian Haney. Brian Haney, welcome to Design Today. Thank you, Dylan. Great to be here. I appreciate you taking time. Really, Brian, um, you are someone who I've had on my mind to want to come down onto the podcast now for uh, for months. In fact, when I first started Design Today, uh, my whole thought process was, I know a lot of good business-minded people, marketed-minded people, design-minded people, uh, and I wanted to kind of capture some of their brilliance on the podcast. And I always felt like I needed to like warm myself up before asking like the big dogs to come on the show. And you were one of those guys who were like, I want to get Brian on the podcast. Before I have him on the podcast, I really need to get my uh, ducks lined up before I invite him. But I'm part of the warm up process. No, dude, we're like 20 yeah. episodes in and I'm kind of feeling comfortable, but still a bit uncomfortable with it. Uh, but I'm glad that you're taking the opportunity to come down here and uh, uh, talk with us. You drove down. I'm not going to pretend like you did it just for me. You've got work stuff that you're doing down here every week, but uh, I'm happy to have you on the show. Uh, the topic that I wanted to discuss with you um, is one that I think you could add some incredible insight. And I think our back and forth dialogue uh, could be uh, could be a fun one. I want to take a moment just to talk about how you and I first met. Okay. Um, maybe we'll remember it a little bit differently. So if, if you remember it differently, call me out. Uh, <laughs> but we're talking like six years ago, BYU-Idaho. I'm in probably my last, second to last semester, and I've got a couple classes that I need to, uh, to cover to make sure I, I graduate with my business degree. And uh, I'm taking this consumer behavior class, which I had no idea what it was. And the teacher who was supposed to teach it decided not to show up that semester. And kind of uh, last minute. Uh -huh. Yeah. And adjunct teacher Brian Haney shows up for class. At first I was, and I'm talking at first, I'm, I'm saying like the first 10 minutes, because I think that's probably all it took for me to realize that I wasn't in trouble. But at first I was going, the professor who was supposed to teach us that class, I was excited for. And then when he's not there, I'm like, why did I wait this long? Like, this is going to be a waste of a class now. But within the first like 10 minutes of the class, I'm pretty sure you threw out the syllabus. <laughs> and that's not even like a joke. Like he threw out the syllabus. Not legit. I think you asked something along the lines of, uh, is this really what you guys want to study this semester? <laughs> and from there, it was like off-roading the rest of the course. Um, consumer behavior wasn't a topic that I actually found myself very interested in going into that class. Uh, but I've told many people, if I ever go get an MBA, I want it to be in consumer behavior, primarily from what that class did for me. Um, awesome. And you taught a lot of things that weren't just consumer behavior uh, that actually caught my attention. You, you, you focus a lot on like uh, nurturing relationships and networking and uh, having the right people kind of in, you know, in your inner circle, whatever it was. And, um, you, it was one, one class in particular, you mentioned something about having like a LinkedIn profile. And I want to know if you remember this. I do remember. You do. <laughs> you talked about having a LinkedIn profile and after class, I'm looking up Brian Haney on LinkedIn. He's not anywhere on LinkedIn. So I'm like, how are we supposed to network with our professor? And he's not even on LinkedIn himself. And so we left class together and I said something, I was like, dude, you're not even on LinkedIn. How are we supposed to be connected? And I don't necessarily remember what uh, your response was, but it was something along the lines of like, you didn't need LinkedIn in order to connect with other people. And from there, it felt like our friendship just kind of started building. And I remember midway through that semester, you and I were getting lunch at a barbecue place there in Rexburg. And I kind of had this like, are you supposed to go to lunch with your professors or, or is this like frowned upon? I'm not sure how this works. And then you paid for lunch too. And I was like, yeah, this is probably definitely not, this is probably definitely not right. I don't remember how that worked out. 
<laughs> um, but six years have gone by. And to sum up this whole thing, uh, we've maintained contact. I can't tell you how many times uh, I've looked forward to you know phone calls with you or needing to pick your brain for something um, or I'm weighing a decision. I just want your input. And I've been able to pick up the phone, call and and get your two cents. And you've offered uh, the most valuable uh, most valuable input. Um, and it's really done a world for me. So this relationship of a mentee and a mentor is kind of what I want to get into. Uh, I've always looked at you as a mentor. And, uh, you know, I think uh, this concept of what a mentee's role is and what a mentor's role is sometimes gets a little bit blurred. And there's a couple of things that we'll get into in a second. But uh, let me start with uh, this whole idea of mentors and uh, ask you if you had any mentors as you were doing your early career stuff. Well, thank you, Dylan. This uh, it's very kind words um, for the intro there, and I'm glad you liked the class. It was a good class. That was a really fun class. It was. <laughs> uh, the the mentor the mentor mentee role, generally speaking, and there's exceptions. So you know, I, there's not like some defined you know definite answer to what that looks like for anybody, right? right? Um, you know, if you if you go back to a little bit maybe more of, of an agrarian world, an agrarian lifestyle, you know, where you cultivate land, that's kind of the agrarian, mm -hmm. the, the agrarian theme. Um, you, you sort of have to have a mentor to, to make it. And in fact, if you back up two or three hundred years before we had electricity on earth, um, most most traditional families, husbands and wives and children and, you know, parents, um, dads had to teach their kids. Sure. Everything. Yep. They had to teach their, their children, you know, how to, you know, skin a rabbit, how to catch one, how to build a house, how to hunt, how to, you know, read. They, yep. re they learned those things at home for the most part, for the average, you know, Johnny Jasinski of the, of the world. Mm -hmm. That's where it came from. Mom and dad taught those, those principles and those, those skills yep. as you grew up. Well, we live in a world today where it's very difficult to find someone, anyone in your life that, that teaches you all those things. Yeah. You know, your dad, anyone's dad that's listening to this, your dad is, is specialized if he still is uh, is around or has a job or right. still employed. He's, right. He has a specialized job and we all have specialized jobs. And so finding a, a mentor sometimes can be a little bit of a, of a catch 22, right? It's a mentor for what? Mm -hmm. Is it, uh, am I an apprentice electrician that's being mentored by a master electrician sure. and he's there to teach me how to sure. be an electrician or is there, um, you know, there's the analogies there that, you know, I really like the, the dad, the father, son analogy for me. And, um, if you even go to the, to the Bible, to the prodigal son, you know, the, the dad never stops sure. loving his son, even sure. though his, his son has gone wayward. Right. Um, and that's kind of, I think, the role of a mentor sometimes is that you don't give up on people as a mentor and, and you can't want to help somebody just because they're going to help you in return. Yeah. Hon honest help, yeah. right? Yeah. So sometimes you get a chance to help somebody that may never get a chance to help you. Right. Right. And if you can sincerely you know, see in yourself, this is an opportunity for me to help somebody or mentor somebody. It, for me, I feel like it's an opportunity that people should jump on and say, look, I'm, I'm excited to help this person. Cause I can, but you can't do that for everybody. You can't you, correct. You can't go help every single person. So, so it, that's kind of what I want to focus on because I've, I've seen a lot of different, like uh, specifically in what I do with UX design, I've seen different groups pop up where, you know, they're looking for mentors, right? Mentors needed. And, you know, you fill out a form and you can become a mentor. And I don't know if I really, I'm kind of on the fence about whether or not I even agree with that structure. Like, <laughs> Oh, sign me up. I'll be right. a mentor. But at the same time, like I get that you need people to go out of your way to like, it takes work. Right. And so you've got to be able to, are you in a place where you can help mentor somebody? Like I get that. But at the same time, it's like, if there's somebody who wants mentoring, I don't know if it's my responsibility to reach out to them and be like, Hey, my name's Dylan and I'm going to be your mentor for the next six months. Like I almost feel like it's on the mentee to be, I don't know, to kind of nourish that relationship. What are your thoughts? Yeah, no, that's that's great. Um, Dylan, you ask a you know, great point here. It's tricky. It's tricky when you dive really into it because there has to be some sort of vested 
interest of mm-hmm. some kind. Mm-hmm. It's easy from a father son because he's my uh, is my son, right, right, right. Um, to to do that, and you can't go serve everybody. But I think, uh, you know, maybe back to that LinkedIn comment you made. Mm-hmm. You know, you, people shouldn't use LinkedIn to find a mentor. Why not? I don't know. Why not? I don't feel. I think it's fake. Okay. You know, I think I think LinkedIn is awesome and can serve a ton of great purposes. Yep. Um, and I could be wrong. There's exceptions. You could find a mentor on LinkedIn that ends up being your best friend and your best mentor. You know, I don't know that that's probably possible somewhere. So I think you're hitting on the piece. Then that's the takeaway is like, I think people can connect on LinkedIn with somebody that they've never met or never even had a conversation with yep. and then shoot off a message expecting like, Hey, I've sent you this message. Now you're going to respond and you're going to give me that input that I'm looking for. and You're going to help me. And, uh, this is it. I don't think it works that way. I don't think it does. And I think that's kind of what you're saying is I don't think that's what LinkedIn is meant for. But at the same time, I've told people that if you want to have like a mentor mentee relationship, nourish it in a way that you would nourish any other friendship uh, and not look at it as like, right. And not look at it as a relationship where, uh, you know, he's at my beckoning call to answer my questions that I have. That's right. That's not what we're here for. No, you make a great point. If you, if you look at, um, if you look at LinkedIn and what LinkedIn can do, in fact, maybe I'll use it as an example. There's some classes that are taught at the university there in Rexburg sometimes that mm-hmm. it's a LinkedIn network class of, I don't even know the name of the class, Sure, um, but uh, about twice a semester or twice a year, a semester will roll around and I'll get a bunch of invitations on LinkedIn yep. with a little message. It was yep. part of an assignment. Yep. And I now know that. Yep. <laughs> and it comes through saying, hey, I'd love to connect. There's a, it's personalized. Yep. Which is a good start. Which is a great start. And there's all kinds of trainings you can read all over the internet about yep. how to do a personalized LinkedIn introduction. Yep. Um, but I, I just have a really hard time believing that you ever have uh, a mentor, mentee, genuinely caring relationship with anybody outside of a digital format. Yep. Um, I think that people that, you know, I, uh, my father once t- told me that you should take advice from people who are sitting in a chair you'd like to sit in. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. So, you know, that's a great start. You should, I like that. You know, if you want to be sitting in that chair, then maybe you should listen to them. Yep. And then you're obviously can form your own opinion, whether you want to do it or not, you know, and absolutely. And often people will take advice and often they won't. Okay. So now that you're actually going to get me to change directions a little bit, because, you know, the question could be asked, well, Dylan, why did you look at Brian as a mentor? And it wasn't necessarily what you were. I mean, yes, you, you said a few things in the class that aligned with what, I, I did believe, but I don't think your mentor should be somebody that you necessarily believe everything like one to one. I mean, you'll never, I think it's that kind of difference in opinion that's going to help improve growth. Right. Right. I think what really drove me to look at you as a mentor was more of what, what your values were. And I knew for you personally, your values were first and foremost family. And it was not, it was not surface level because six years later have shown me time and time again, that the one thing that Brian Haney values above all will be his family. And I align with that so closely. Um, I, I struggle with it from time to time, but I align with wanting that to be uh, my driving factor. Uh, and that's what really gave me the opportunity to look at Brian and go like, you know, not necessarily the seat that he's in, but like the the place that he's in in life. You know, he he is a very successful when it comes to entrepreneurship or business or sales or marketing, you know, whatever uh, term we want to use to give you here, very successful in it, but he's never taking his eyes off of his number one priority, which is his family. And I've, I, and I love this. I can't tell you how many times I've seen Brian Haney say, no, I won't do that because I'm with my family this weekend or no, I won't do that because I'm doing this with my family. And that has always been something like, I want to get to that spot. I want to get to that spot where, <clears throat> where I can um, always keep those values, number one. And you've always done a great job with that. And so I think it's because of your values that I've always aligned with Brian Haney as a mentor. Thank you, Dylan. That means a lot. That really does. And, you know, one of the core, one of the core synergies that I think will bring people the most satisfaction in whatever it is that they do in their life is understanding what governing values are for your own life, mm-hmm. for your family, and that would be your immediate and, and in some cases extended family, and then what you do for a career with governing values. 
And I think if people can really hold true to what they believe and hold true to what is true yeah. for them, um, it often leads to less regret mm -hmm. in a life than a life. Um, you know, I've seen those t-shirts or bumper stickers, not all who wander are lost. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, you can argue every side of every argument all sure. the time, right? Sure. Maybe you're not lost. You're just wandering around. I understand that. Um, but when it comes to values and governing values of your life, I think if you are wandering, you are lost. Yeah. Um, you should, you should hold true to what you know will, will bring you the most happiness and the most satisfaction and the most success in your life. And success isn't measured by, by dollars or by championships or by wins. Um, you know, if I could go on a quick a tangent here, yeah. I'm, I'm a college football fan, yep. love college football. And it's such a funny paradigm to me to see uh, coaches that are getting fired all the time because they go six and six or seven and six or even eight and four. Mm -hmm. uh, there was an Arizona State coach a year or two ago, got fired and the AD publicly came out and said, we expect to win a championship every year at this institution. And if we can't do it, he literally said, you can Google it. You can fact check this, <laughs> right? He says, we expect to win a championship every year. It's just, it's laughable. There's 12 teams in the Pac-12. Right. So that is an unrealistic, yeah. really ill-advised thing to say publicly. And isn't that everyone else's goal too? It is an unrealistic right. expectation. Right. Right. And I think that uh, governing values can help with mentors. And and I have had some great mentors. Back to your comment, I think my greatest mentor in my life is probably my father. Mm -hmm. uh, from the value standpoint, value proposition standpoint. But um, business-wise, I've had dozens of great mentors that have helped me along the way. Um, that have been, but that have been, uh, been great. In fact, maybe I'll share one, one more thing here. In, in a class I took, uh, at, at, uh, BYU in my MBA, um, Curtis LeBaron, I believe was the professor that taught the class. And, um, he talked about how in your life you will have, you'll be able to count on one hand, the number of professional relationships that you will have in your life hmm. that will actually always be there to have your back. Mm-hmm. He goes, you won't be able to count more than five. And so, you know, there's different, there's different methods and net methodologies and ideas. People will say there's a hundred thousand mentors you're going to have in your life. I don't believe any of that. I believe there's about five people. I, he's got research to back it up. We could talk, you could bring it up on another podcast sure. sometime, but five people in your whole life that will professionally mentor you that genuinely care about you, your wife, your children, your future, your career. And he says, those ones you don't want to, you don't want to let go of. So yeah. when it comes to mentors, maybe you could yeah, talk I, about that. I love that. I, I've never put that together, but even as I was driving home, preparing for this podcast, I was thinking like, you know, how many mentors do I really have in my life? And I can, I can think of three. And so I'm, I'm still looking forward to discovering who those next two are. Uh, <laughs> but I think you're right. I've met a lot of good people. I've met a lot of uh, uh, fantastic people with fantastic values, a lot of success, but I think if I were to narrow that group down to people who I can text late at night or on a weekend or call on a weekend and take 20 minutes of their time and I know that they're going to give me some insight, you know, that list really, is, I think, is narrowed down to probably about three people. And uh, I don't think that's a bad thing because I think that's a true relationship that I can nourish. Um, it's the whole, I mean, you go back to LinkedIn with uh you know, why isn't LinkedIn Facebook where you can see that you've got 1500 friends? Why does it LinkedIn always max out at 500 plus? It's because the creator of LinkedIn never intended for you to have 500, more than 500 connections. Right. You can't nourish 500 relationships. Right. But we live in this social media age where it's like the more followers, the better. And we've kind of broke that model that he really wanted. But right. if you break it down to how many people do I actually have a relationship with that I can nourish? It's going to be a smaller group than you think. And so, yeah, get picky with who it is that you're looking to for, you know, as a mentor. Um, now, what Mitchell said, you, you mentioned that you had a couple mentors. How did you select your mentors or how did you get, uh, uh, how did that relationship start? Where did that align? That's fortuitous. You would ask that. Why is that? Because I was actually just in my head going to, um, when you talked about LinkedIn. Yeah. Uh, one of the founders of LinkedIn was Reid Hoffman. Right. And, um, he wrote a book called the startup of you. Yes. And that's where he made his 500 right. connection comment. Yeah. Yep. But, uh, the interesting part about that, and I think back and I don't know Reid Hoffman, I'd love to meet him, but he, I mean, great. I've read his stuff and yep. I've seen him speak and those kind of things. But, um, you know, Reid Hoffman talks about the startup of you. And really, I think that the mentality that an individual has as to what they want out of a, maybe a future mentor, mm -hmm. um, they're kind of a self-fulfilling prophecy. I just, I just 
There's nothing inside of me, Dylan, that will ever not believe that. Ever. I believe people are happy if they choose to be. I believe people can network into groups if they want to. I believe people will find success if they want to. I believe people can find joy in mundane tasks if they simply choose to. And and to answer your question, how did I find my, my mentors? Unbeknownst to me at the time, I feel like most of my mentors were a, a byproduct of me being a, a an overly aggressive optimist most of my life. <laughs> and, and, um, and somehow at a young age, I just developed the ability to just not care if I did or said things that maybe weren't perfect. Sure. You know, the thing up here says, I love that experiment, fail, learn, repeat. Right. Uh, welcome to life. Yep. Right. Mm-hmm. That's wise, mm-hmm. wise words to live by. And, and that and you just get back up. I mean, there's thousands of athletes and, and h- historical war stories and politicians and forming and fallings of countries all over the world that talk about that same principle. And right. So I would say maybe I would even go to I believe it's in Proverbs. Uh, There's the scripture that's based off of James Allen's book as a man. Thinketh. As a man thinketh. He says, as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. And I think that you can find mentors in that way where the a mentor-mentee relationship, I think, needs to be reciprocal, mm-hmm. right? So it isn't just advice, 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 and then you rebel. That's like a teenager to a parent. Right. You know, it needs to be, here's maybe some advice or some help or some thoughts. And whether the mentee takes those or not, there needs to be gratitude. And at, well, to back to your point, it needs to be treated as relationship. Gratitude and thanks. Thank you. Right. You know, it doesn't need to be, it doesn't need, there doesn't need to be a gap. Sometimes there's, there's huge gaps in mentor mentee relationships. Yep. Um, social status, times in their life, stages of their life, chapters of their life, bank accounts. Sometimes there's big gaps. It doesn't have to be that way. Right. You know, you can relate on an individual level saying, well, great. Tell me more about that. Tell me how this worked. You know, and you, you brought the book as a man thinketh. And I go back to, I read that book probably half a dozen times and listen to it probably another dozen times. Love that book. Well, you know who I got that book from? That was you as well. And I go, as I think back, when you recommended that book to me, it wasn't, again, it wasn't this, uh, I don't know, maybe I'm going to be putting words or thoughts into your mouth that, again, you can correct, but it, you didn't recommend that book just as you would get on the radio and recommend it to the world to read. However, I think the world could benefit from that book. You recommended it to me, and it actually meant something to me at that time. It was exactly what I needed at that time. And it did feel like something that was personalized when it was recommended to me. And like I said, that book is a uh, fact. There's a quote from that book. Um, Your vision is the promise of what you shall one day be. Yeah. That quote is on the homepage of my website because I believe that quote. And that quote has stuck out to me so many times, right? And there's so many takeaways from that book that I'm going, holy smokes, that book has had a huge influence on me. Where did I find that book? Brian Haney got me that book. He was the one who recommended that one for me. These mentor relationships, I can't undersell the value of of having a good mentor. But I do think it takes finding the right person to mentor and then creating that relationship I, that does take time. It takes effort. Um, can it be done through a LinkedIn connection? Oh, I'm not going to say it's impossible, but it's sure. definitely going to be challenging. Um, I was speaking down at UVU uh, a couple months ago, and uh, I made the comment that I wanted them to reach out and connect with me. But when they do it, if they don't send a personalized message along with it, I'm probably not going to accept it. Yeah. You know, I want to know, I want to be able to start a relationship with you. Right. And if you just send the connect button with no other comment, like, I don't know you. It's just, I mean, you could be right. a robot for all I know. Right. And so let's start the relationship somehow. Send me a comment, send me a message. Maybe you are, uh, you follow that up with commenting on a post on LinkedIn, or maybe it, uh, I don't know, it, but it needs to build naturally uh, in order for it to actually be something that's going to be be beneficial to grow. Yeah. Can I add on to that? Um, sometimes we, you know, there's a, there's a, there's a really old phrase, a cliche phrase is careful what you wish for. Mm-hmm. You've heard that. Mm-hmm. There've been books written on it, plays written about it, songs sure. written about it, movies made about it. Um, because it's true. It's a true tried and tried and true tested sure. over time, uh, principle. 
um, there were times, there was a few times in my life where I had some mentors that I, I thought I really wanted to be like mm-hmm. and follow <laughs> and, I, and, and just be, I'm going to be careful here, Dale. And I'm sure. not, I'm not throwing stones sure. at anyone. Sure. Okay. To each their own. Um, but my governing values with time showed that they were not the same as the governing values of someone I proposed to be like yep. or wanted to follow or wanted to emulate. And, um, and for me, naturally it, it was a, it was a better fit for me to just step aside or disconnect maybe some of those relationships as I was growing up through college and in my young adult career. Mm-hmm. Um, so back to the question, I think that, yeah, I think that your, your governing values have to govern who you, you foresee being somebody in your life that helps you, um, care for what you wish for. I mean, I've been around enough people to see. Um, all sides of the spectrum yeah. from, from, um, friends of mine, people I've known that have get, that have ruined their life through, um, substance abuse or, or money or greed or deceit or dishonesty, going to jail, losing their business, losing mm-hmm. their wife, their kids, their family. Uh, it's crazy. And, and you know, you, you rewind 10 years and you wouldn't have thought that that wouldn't have been maybe something you would have perceived, um, happening so you know that's interesting because it almost then uh puts a little bit of pressure then on those who are looked at as mentors to be true to who you are right and maybe that's kind of where i go back to like the whole yeah i'll sign up to be a mentor i don't know if it works like that i mean right. <laughs> i think people may look at like well i'm a mentor therefore i've reached like this status of uh you know, I've arrived in my professional life or I've arrived at, at something here. Uh, therefore, I can now teach everything that I know to somebody. Maybe there's a little bit more pressure on it than we think, right? Yeah. I mean, to the things that you just mentioned, you know, substance abuse or losing uh, your business or losing your family, whatever it may be. Yeah, that's that's a, a amount of pressure that I don't know, maybe being a mentor isn't as dreamy as some of the people <laughs> like, right? Well, I think mentors can come in different sizes and shapes. I mean, uh, I'm sure you're familiar with the story from Les Mis. No. Well, um, at the beginning. Wait, time out though. You haven't watched Les Mis. Oh, yeah. Seriously? I've actually been to the place. Every no, time. you haven't. Don't, don't tell anyone. <laughs> I love it. Les Mis is awesome. Well, all five it's listeners of, my, of this podcast of, will now know that you listen to Les Mis. <laughs> it's one of my wife's favorite books. My wife's a big reader. I have okay. never read the book. The book is very large and long. There's not very men, just for those who are listening, there's not very men who I know that I picture more masculine and uh, Brian Haney listens to Les Mis. Okay, continue. Well, I'm going to slaughter this because this wasn't prepared. <laughs> in, in advance, I would remember the, the, the guy's name, the main character's name. It's uh, Jean something. Uh, Jean Valjean, I think, is his name. Jean-Claude Van Damme. Yeah, he was in the 80s. He was awesome. But no, and uh, I think it's Jean Valjean, something like that. But uh, at the beginning, he has a bunch of problems. And anyhow, he ends up being taken in by a priest. Okay. And in the middle of the night, he decides to steal all the, the silver and gold candlesticks, the the values inside this priest's home and leave. Um, when the priest took him in and fed him mm-hmm. and he gets caught and he can't, I, and I don't remember the exact thing, but he's going to be punished. And I think it's either death or back to prison or whatever. And, uh, the priests goes, the, the, the police bring him back to the priest's home or the convent or wherever it was. And, uh, the priest goes and gets the last two candlesticks he has and brings it back and gives them to him and says, you forgot these. Mm. Good luck on your way. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, and all, and then, and that whole story, that's one of the most powerful parts of that whole story. I mean, he ends up turning the tide as a mentor for Jean Valjean. He just turns his entire life around to help people because of one moment Mm -hmm. where someone had an opportunity to really influence somebody who needed it. And it's powerful. Mm -hmm. It's a, it's a great, it's a great reminder to all of us that there's, there's more to life than just money and success and greed. Yeah. And, and things, my dad calls it stuff. Right. My dad is the most anti-stuff person I've ever met. There's, I mean, this is, I mean, sounds altruistic, but it's true. My dad is the least worldly man I've ever known. Sure. He could not care less about any material object that he owns. Doesn't care. Mm-hmm. The clothes he wears, the car he drives, the home he lives in, doesn't care. And that's hard. It's hard for me. It's hard for a lot of people. It's hard. You know, I enjoy driving a nice truck, mm-hmm. 
And you've had a few of them. <laughs> I like driving a nice truck. It's fun, <laughs> right? But um, and it's just a, it's just stuff to pull more stuff. So I can fill a full trailer full of motorized something and yep. go pull it somewhere, right? Yep. But um, yeah, so I think a mentor, mentor opportunities, sometimes we don't always know what those look like. Um, it could be a young man in a youth group that you work with. It could be uh, someone at work or an opportunity you give to somebody or kind words you offer to someone where you genuinely mean it and say, look, you know, keep your chin up, you know, uh, keep your chin up, man. I mean, stop the self pity. Self pity bodes well on nobody. Right. Right. But we've all been in self pity. Right. So it's not like we're all, you know, innocent from having had, you know, thoughts of doubt or lack of self worth worth or whatever you, you want to call it. But I think the opportunity to mentor people, whether it ends up being one of the five or not, shouldn't be something people overlook because the world needs more people that care and want to help people be better, not just a better graphic designer or a better attorney or a better this, but better people. Right. You need to be, you know, let's focus on being better people. Yep. I, I mean, I don't know what more to say on top of that. I think you just, I think you hit the nail on the head there. Um, unless you get any other thoughts, I think we can wrap it up right there. <laughs> I talk too much. No, that's the mic drop right there. And if these <laughs> mics weren't on booms, you feel free to drop it. <laughs> well, I'm, I feel very honored, Dylan. And um, you are, I, I consider you a, a dear friend and I'm glad that I could be here with you today. And well, I appreciate um, that. I, I don't think this will be the last time we will be doing something together. I think that we'll do other business ventures down the road together, undoubtedly. You know, and that's the truth. I mean, we've uh, over the last six years, we've continued to, I mean, our past continue to cross and I don't think it's by happenstance I think it's by choice and so I think it speaks to a relationship that was nourished six years ago and continues to get nourished today and uh, I just can't thank you enough you've done a lot for me a lot for our family so I appreciate that thanks Dylan and thanks for coming on today thanks for having me okay that's a wrap